Hello, my name is Jorb. I love gear. This is going to be another quick repair video. I just replaced all the tech switches in my Roland D50. I kind of just want to leave this on the internet forever <laughs> in case anybody ever is also replacing the switches in their D50 and they want to uh, follow it visually because I find that pretty valuable for myself. If you are subscribed, bless you for watching this <laughs> repair video. Uh, they really do want to perform. Uh, if you aren't, Hope that it helps you solve your problem or you enjoy it in some way. Uh, don't forget to subscribe while you're here. Helps me a lot. You'll get some more uh, gear coverage and more repair videos. Cool? Okay. Let's talk about the actual piece of kit, huh? I picked it up a couple hours away from home. Relatively cheap. The listing said the buttons didn't always respond, which is normal. These things get stiff. But when I got there and I talked to the guy, the sentiment was more, they normally do not respond. <laughs> which would be a difference that would matter to me if I didn't plan on fixing them. But I did, so no big deal. Uh, but other than that, he didn't list off any problems, but also said that he hadn't plugged it in in a very long time, which made me think there would probably be a couple more problems. Anyway, I got home and it started up no problem, and it made sounds no problem, and almost none of the buttons were responding. I could get bank three and patch five and seven to respond, and almost nothing else, even, you know, really, really pushing down. So pretty quickly, I gave up on that. It, it was so total, it was so not working. I suspected it was a ribbon cable. Um, so it was another escalation <laughs> of the uh, button issue, and I thought it might have had an issue with stereo that might have just been me misunderstanding the upper and lower outputs, uh, and there was one key that was not responding, so I marked it before I went in. Anyway, the opening the D50 is kind of weird. You do it all from, essentially all of it happens from the bottom panel. So you have to flip it over, and because the joystick's on top, you can't rest it flat, and so I put it up on few cardboard boxes, I think, from your rec modules, but you have to take off essentially every screw on the bottom panel, and there's four within the feet as well, and then there's like a slanted portion that's towards the back, but if you have it flipped with the keys away from you, it'll be towards you. There's um, some black, some longer, smaller black screws on the back as well, and those need to come out, and once you open it up, you'll see the main board, the bottom of the key bed, below both of those is our target there, like the panel board, with the screen on it, and then off to one side. That board has the volume, the aftertouch, uh, the pitch bend. Okay, but we care about the panel board to replace all these switches, right? So you need to unscrew everything that holds the main board in, and then remove some ribbon cables as well. And that has enough other ribbon cables that it'll rest on top of and hold on that you can just sort of fold it back. Uh, you also need to take out the key bed, which was fine with me because I needed to uh, check on that one key I was having trouble with anyway. So those screws come out, and then to remove the key bed, you need to sort of slide it towards the bender panel. Uh, it hooks underneath some uh, metal on the opposite side. And so ribbon cables out and screws out for both of those. Then we have access to our uh, panel board at the bottom. So I unscrewed the screws around it, and I discover while I try to remove it, there is um, at least two cables soldered directly to the screen that go, I think, to the power supply. Uh, that didn't seem to be connectors, and if they were, they were firm enough. I didn't want to force them to do anything. And, but luckily, you can unscrew the screen from the panel board, so I unscrewed the screen and then screwed it gently back into the case, set that aside so I could focus on just the panel board. And here it is. It's whitish by design, but very, very dusty and dirty in this one. Sort of dusty and dirty enough that I couldn't believe it. And in a place that didn't make much sense, because it's not like it's super wide open. So I think... And I'm totally guessing, I'm suspicious that it was having trouble, somebody opened it up to work on it and like left it out in a garage for that to become totally, totally layered with grime. Or maybe I just misunderstand how much dirt can get in through the top, but kind of an extraordinary <laughs> amount of dirt and grime had made it onto that board. Anyway, anyway, it's super simple, it doesn't include the joystick or the screen, it is almost just this network of buttons, which is lucky for us because that's all we have to deal with. And so since these are totally junk and I wasn't going to go through and leave one or two and then if that goes bad in another two months I'll have to crack everything open again. So I was just going to replace all of them while I had this all open. And what I found to be the best process for replacing stuff you know you aren't going to use is just destroy it. <laughs> so for these I clipped all four of the legs. I would do a whole row of the right side and then a whole row of the left side and pull out the switches with no legs. And I did that for uh, the entire panel. So clipped all four legs. And so I then at the end had a, uh, uh, at that point you're left with this. You have all the snipped off legs are still soldered in, but you have uh, this flat open space. So I cleaned it at this point just with, so just isopropyl alcohol uh, rubbed through. 
And now we're flipped over, and we need to get those stubby remaining legs out of each of those holes. And so, so that's just a soldering iron and a uh, pair of tweezers. And so I had to heat it up, come in with the tweezers and pull it out. Um, stepping a little bit forward, those holes need to be clear for us to replace it with a new tack switch. And, um, and the solder seemed to be um, thick enough, viscous enough, holding its temperature enough that I could sort of manipulate it if I... Um, I could sort of manipulate it just with my soldering iron. And so I tried as often as I could to either get the timing right that enough solder came off of the leg that I wouldn't need to give that hole any individual attention again, or um, I tried to touch it up just with a soldering iron and not any desoldering tools later. There were a few, of course, where I had to do it with a desoldering tool just because you can't help it. Uh, but just trying to save myself time because with 51 panel buttons and four legs each, 204 interactions when you snip it, when you desolder it, when you clean it up, when you put in new ones. So anything you can minimize, any steps you can save makes this go a lot quicker. Uh, and I was getting better at it by the end. And I'm also kind of quick at this anyway. But so after that, all those holes come off and then I visually inspected for any cut traces or any tarnishing, any rust on traces that might have gone bad. It seemed like it was totally good. And then we start replacing the buttons. Before this, I made sure that they functioned in the same way. I believe these tack switches are a standard. They're a normally open switch, which means when you depress them, when you close them, they make a connection that was not made before, as opposed to a switch that's normally closed and you break the connection when you press it. But these were normally open. And I checked that the tack switches I had behaved in the same way as the ones I pulled out. So I tested a few while they in there, while they were in there. Uh, and the ones I knew were good, five and seven, I think. So I used that with the multimeter to check. And even if I didn't get full contact, I saw a um, change in resistance or change in impedance, I guess, on my multimeter. When I pressed that button uh, in the same configuration, in the same shape, in the same orientation as the new one when I pressed it, made the connection. Cool. So I knew they would be a good fit. I don't know necessarily that that's always the case, but I happen to have this bag of 50 tack switches um, that I bought as spares for something else that I never ended up working on. But I had these 50 tack switches and they fit in here perfectly. Uh, I'll give you a link to what they were. I think they were six by six millimeter and then five millimeters tall. And I believe you could use four and a half millimeters tall as well. I don't think the clearances are that tight on the plastic buttons from above, but, but there you go. Um, you fit them in and they have their legs positioned in such a way that they'll hold themselves in. You don't have to solder them there, which is great because I can totally populate the board and then flip it over and solder. But I told you earlier, there's 51 switches I had to take off and I had 50 switches, uh, in that bag. So I had to get one from somewhere else, but lucky for me, I keep shit that I shouldn't keep. <laughs> so I have the, uh, sort of, uh, corpsified main board from an Akai DPS 12 digital recorder that I've been just robbing parts from bit by bit. I put the screen in an MPC 2000 and I've kept it around for a while, but it has uh, a pretty fair number of tech switches. So I desoldered one of those just with a desoldering pump. Each leg um, gets as much solder removed from it as possible. And then you pry it in one direction, heat two up, pry it in another direction, heat two up, and then move your soldering iron between a few legs while you pull on it. And if you heat one up enough, then move to another one, it can stay warm enough that they'll both be liquid or they'll both be malleable enough for you to just remove it. Sometimes counterproductively you need to add more solder so there's more mass there to stay warm, to keep the heat, stay liquid. That desoldered and it seemed to be the right fit and I checked it with a multimeter and it behaved the same so. <laughs> anyway, populated that last one and then I soldered them. Anyway, I soldered all those in, four legs each. Uh, while I was doing that, I just quickly opened up the keyboard. I didn't get any footage of it but I pulled the key off and it's like a pair of graphite connections that get made and so I cleaned that up a little bit added a little bit of pencil and then reflowed the solder on all the connections around that um, one problem key just in case they had a cold solder joint uh, again while it was open I reflowed the solder around all the stereo jacks because I thought there was a problem that might not have been a problem or I might have solved it by reflowing the solder but it doesn't hurt to do that you don't really need to add more but uh, putting it back together was the exact opposite of uh, taking it apart. <laughs> I put the screen back into the panel board, replaced the panel board. I think I left a shield out because I'm looking at it on my desk <laughs> right now. Uh, but the panel board goes in, and then the keyboard, 
and then the main board where I think all the sound generation happens putting ribbon cables back in as you go first time I got it all buttoned up uh, the LEDs next to the joystick weren't working but the functions still were uh, so so I opened it back up again and found one ribbon cable on the facing me side of that main board which must have just been power for the LEDs so no problem got that plugged in and then flipped back over our buttons seem to be uh, in good shape uh, button it all up and uh, the buttons all worked uh, and my one bad key was working again no problems and stereo seemed to work uh, the way that it should yeah I I know that this isn't super hard for anybody to know or figure out but I think if you are new to this or you're trying to figure out a specific problem finding somebody walk through your specific problem can be very helpful so that's why I do it uh, you know, if there was some part of opening the D50 that you were nervous about, you've seen somebody do it. If there's some part of replacing the tax switches specifically on the D50 that you were nervous about, there you go. So anyway, hope this was helpful. I love the D50. It's going to get to review pretty soon, review and demo. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for subscribing. <laughs> hope to see you in the next one. Cheers. So long. Goodbye.